Did you listen to Savannah Chrisley's latest podcast? <laughs> I can't even talk about Savannah's podcast episodes anymore without bursting out in laughter. This girl, in my opinion, is so dingy, gullible, naive, blinded by, in my opinion, pure lies. It's ridiculous. The girl ain't even making sense at all. All I see is somebody out here want clicks and views, girl. <laughs> Woo, we all see you. We all see you. Before Savannah created this podcast and YouTube channel, before their reality TV show got canceled, Mm -hmm. Savannah was gung-ho on getting on her parents' podcast and just trashing content creators that do the same thing she does. She gives her commentary on things just like a lot of us. Hey, girl, pop meat kettle. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Savannah is out here begging people to show up to Todd and Julie's federal appeal case physically. She is begging people to show up. In this recent episode, she's not only begging you to show up, but a few minutes after she begs you to show up, she then says, I've had people contact my publicist and say they were coming. That makes me nervous. What? You were the one. What? Were you the one contacting your own publicist? Because you were the one that invited people just last week. What? You have been on here inviting people, giving them the full address and all, begging people to come out. Begging people. Name dropping, telling them you, Chase, and Nanny Faye will be there. Come on out. Come on down. One and all. Come on down. And now you saying you're nervous? Savannah is full of it, in my opinion. Full of Bull doo-doo. Savannah loves the attention. Savannah wants the attention. She is her father's daughter, and the apple did not fall far from that tree, I could assure you. And we're not going to listen to the whole podcast episode because I could not, okay? I could not make y'all suffer through that no more. It's just the same thing over and over and over and over again. She's over here like, oh, they're being done so wrong. The justice system is so corrupt. My parents don't deserve to be in prison. Um, girl, bye. Girl, bye. Your parents and you were clearly living above your means, allegedly, and you allegedly didn't pay your taxes. That's what happens. You don't pay your bills, you go sit in jail. <laughs> I mean, not that hard to figure out. We all got rules and laws we have to live by. So lip balm. Todd and Julie Chrisley is not above the law. Okay? She still ain't said, did they pay their taxes? Did they pay? That's why they in jail. Because they didn't pay their taxes. And they were trying to conspire with the... Like what? The fraudulent loans of it all? She ain't mentioning none of that. She ain't holding them accountable. What she's doing is... She's like an echo chamber because she knows that's what's going to get people's attention. Is Oh, I'm here fighting for the, the justice and the people. I'm here for the people. No, you ain't. You here for some attention. You here because you struggling and you tired of living like you living with your parents in jail. Prison, excuse me. You sound ridiculous. You sound ridiculous. The girl, all she does is sits here and says... Oh, they're being done so wrong. People don't deserve to do... Like, girl, you do the crime, you do the time. Period. I pay my taxes every year, baby, so your parents should pay theirs. I also don't get loans that I can't afford because uh, I can't afford them. You just don't do it. Now, we've seen Todd, Julie, and Savannah, and all them living in mansions and doing all this and... Living life just way above their means. Knowing they was living above their means. But she won't tell it. Old girl talking about real estate. Girl, girl, you ain't on the real estate market. Shh. 
We don't see you out here on billboards slanging houses. We see you in the headlines and on your YouTube channel. That's where we see you, Savannah. So if you were so invested and successful in real estate, then why ain't we seen it? Ooh. 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 I'm bringing the realness. And I can't stand folks getting out here just, the system is corrupt. Why did it take two years to, girl, because court systems take a long time. Court cases take a long time. This ain't nothing new. What are you talking about here? Y'all just take a listen. So in case you're wondering, April 15th and our appeal is April 19th. So I'm recording this on Monday. The appeal is Friday. And it was super important for me to get this podcast out before the appeal because so many people are asking questions. There's so many misconceptions, just facts that aren't facts that are swirling around out there. So first off, I want to start off by saying our appeal is April 19th in Atlanta at the Russell Courthouse. Let's see. I want to let you guys know because you can attend if you want to attend. It is in Atlanta, April 19th at the Richard B. Russell Federal Building and U.S. Courthouse in Atlanta. The address is 75 Ted Turner Drive, Southwest. And I'm pretty sure our appeal is being heard at around 9 a.m. We're going to get there earlier. So if you want to come, show up. Be dressed appropriately. Obviously, it's a federal courthouse. And just be respectful of everyone around, law enforcement, um, attorneys, just everyone. Just remember, it's a federal courthouse. And make sure you bring your ID, leave your cell phone in the car because they are not allowed in a federal courthouse, and show up and support us. I will be there. Chase will be there. Grayson will be there. Uh, Nanny Faye will be there. My mom's parents will not be there, but the only reason is because my grandfather just is having a bunch of health issues, and they're going to be keeping Chloe for me so that she doesn't have to go and be subjected to all of that because I just don't feel like it's the environment for an 11 year old to be in, especially someone who's been just so traumatized by the system. I feel like it would be a lot for her to process and just cause her to take steps backwards. So she's going to be staying with my mom's parents and they're going to go visit my mom on Saturday. We will all be at the courthouse Friday. We will hear the appeal. We have been designated our three judges so we know who those judges are and all i can do is hope and pray that god gives them just the energy the wherewithal the knowledge just to truly look into our case and look into the documents and see what so many other legal analysis see so with that being said the appeal april 19th federal courthouse in atlanta ted turner drive and be there at 8 30 so we look forward to seeing you there i hope you're there supporting us mom and dad's friends will be there family um it's just so important to show up for people in times of need and in the midst of adversity i know so far what i can tell you because this is in the court transcripts there's a website that we all use. Um, it's called Pacer. And that's where you can go and pull all the legal documents. On Pacer, you can see where we were assigned our court date. You can see all the documents that have been filed for our case. And recently, the you know we were assigned our court date. We were assigned our panel of judges. And we also, within Pacer, you can see to where the appeals court has asked for certain exhibits in our case. So exhibits meaning certain evidence or certain documents pertaining to what we have alleged. So for me, I have to try to take the little wins as they come. I see that as a win because it's showing me that these judges are truly looking in to the allegations that we've made and they're wanting to review every little thing. So that to me is a win. It's a win that they're asking for more documents, more details. And I just hope and pray that these judges see, like I said, what so many other people see. Another thing is 
our lawyers have sent a letter to the United States Attorney's Office requesting information pertaining to Tommy Krupp, who was the lead prosecutor on our case. The letter that was sent, and I'm talking a little bit slower because I'm making sure that I just put out what I'm allowed to put out. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to read the letter aloud, so I'm not going to read it aloud, but I can give you the information pertaining to the letter. So Tommy Krupp was a lead prosecutor on the case. I've spoken about him plenty of times before, and things just have not added up. If you look at the timeline of our case, started in 2012. So 2012, my parents were being investigated. It took, what, seven years for the government to issue a federal indictment. So that should really scare a lot of people at the fact that if the government had such a strong case, why did it take you seven years to issue a federal indictment? It should be pretty easy if you believe someone is that guilty to get a federal indictment. And Tommy Krupp has been on the case from day one. This was his baby. This was his big case to go off and private practice and create a huge name for himself and be a lawyer that's making millions of dollars a year and not a lawyer making $150,000 a year. So this was the case that he needed to excel his career. And therefore, he put a lot of thought, <laughs> time, energy into how he was going to potentially manipulate this case and how he was going to get a conviction. And throughout the trial, we obviously had alleged that there was government misconduct with the prosecutors, with Tommy Krupp and Annalise Peters. They were the two prosecutors on the case. And we had alleged that there was serious misconduct that could have changed the outcome of the verdict that was handed down by a jury. And we never got answers. The government responded and said that they just had harmless errors and that it didn't impact the trial. First off, that's not for the government to say. <laughs> we know that jurors have said if they knew what the prosecutors had said was false, then it would have changed the outcome of the trial. So we know that to be a fact. And after trial, we had obtained information that showed that the prosecutors knew their witness was lying. They instructed her to lie. They instructed her to tell a story that was not accurate. Once we alleged that, Tommy Krupp was no longer at the U.S. Attorney's Office. Now, that should cause people to ask a lot of questions. And it happened very quietly. And when I say quietly, I mean very quietly because... He is not withdrawn from the case when he's no longer at the U.S. Attorney's Office. So therefore, he should have withdrawn from the case as counsel. And that has not happened. And he is now at the FDIC. And from what I'm being told by lawyers, friends in the criminal justice system, everyone has told me that you go to the FDIC to die, basically. Like, your career dies when you go to the FDIC. So, that is a red flag to me. That this is the biggest case of your career, and you leave the U.S. Attorney's Office to go to the FDIC. No one does that. You leave the U.S. Attorney's Office to go into private practice, to work on huge cases, to make millions of dollars a year. So none of it is, none of it's adding up. And so we have sent a letter requesting all of this information from the government. We want to know why he's not there. We want to know if they gave him the opportunity to resign instead of being fired. We want to know of all of his misconduct because we've been told that there was misconduct in previous cases as well. So we want to know why this man is in charge of the rest of someone else's life. We want to know 
all of the information pertaining to him. And I believe that as a citizen of the United States of America, going through a criminal trial, being prosecuted by your own country, I believe that you have the right to that information. And under certain laws and guidelines, we do have the right to that information. So I hope and pray that the government, the prosecutors do the right thing and hand over that information because that information could be very damning and it could change the outcome of this whole situation. And so that has that has happened. And I'm pretty sure the government has until Thursday to turn over such information. And if they don't, then we're going to have to take another route, which we're willing and able to do. And if they don't turn it over, that tells you all that you need. This whole appeal. And I have also retained another lawyer who is kind of coming on board, helping with this whole process, but also helping on the BOP side of things, the Bureau of Prisons, to help maybe rectify that situation, to help bring change to our federal prison system and these men and women who are suffering. And so I'm really excited about that. But for the appeal, I'm not going to lie. I would be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. Like, I am very, very, very nervous because so far what I've seen from our justice system is injustice. I have seen a system and prosecutors that lied to get what they want. And unfortunately, since I want to say it's 1977, let's see, let's see if I'm right. When were prosecutors granted <sighs> so many dates, guys? Yep, 1976. So in 1976, prosecutors were granted full immunity. And for people that don't realize what that is, is prosecutors can never be prosecuted for their misconduct, mistakes, whatever it may be. They can act in such a way that is so egregious that and there there's no consequences so there's nothing in place to cause them to think twice about their actions and that is very alarming to me because they can do whatever they want whenever they want and they can walk off and just scot-free and never suffer any consequences for it and this is the rest of someone else's life this is the rest of my family's life so this is what scares me and so yeah, of course I'm going to be nervous when prosecutors have full immunity. Of course I'm going to be nervous when I've seen such injustices and I've seen people just lie to get a conviction. And you look at the, the Department of Justice, they've got, I want to say, a 98, 99% conviction rate. That's nothing to be proud of. And so it worries me because I'm like, all right, so far the system has been a failure. So what's to say that this is going to be any different? But at the same time, I have hope. I have hope that these judges are going to be different because I do believe in law and order. I believe in our judicial system. I believe we should have a system in place that runs as it was designed to run. We don't have that. Like our system is not run how it was designed to run. So I, I do believe in law and order. I believe in all these things, but... When it comes to this, I'm just a little on edge. At the Russell Courthouse, let's see. I want to let you guys know because you can attend if you want to attend. It is in Atlanta, April 19th at the Richard B. Russell Federal Building and U.S. Courthouse in Atlanta. The address is 75 Ted Turner Drive, Southwest. And I'm pretty sure our appeal is being heard at around 9 a.m., we're going to get there earlier. So if you want to come, show up, be dressed appropriately. Obviously, it's a federal courthouse. And just be respectful of everyone around, law enforcement, um, attorneys, just everyone. Just remember, it's a federal courthouse. And make sure you bring your ID, leave your cell phone in the car because they are not allowed in a federal courthouse, and show up and support us. I will be there. Chase will be there. Grayson will be there. Uh, Nanny Faye will be there. My mom's parents will not be there.
Savannah, in my opinion, wants you to feel sorry for her. She wants everybody to feel sorry for her. That's the type of person she is. We all know there's people out here who literally drive the pity train and they will stop at every stop they can to try and get some pity and some sympathy from any and everybody. Notice how she begged people at the beginning of the video, even telling people the address, even telling people, please come out. Me and Chase will be there. Nanny Faye will be there. Come out and support. Come out and support. I also want to say in the comment section, uh, what an air person saying they was going. They was everybody saying, sorry, can't go. Sorry, can't go. What an air one person saying they was going. But yet in the same video, she says, I already know people were contacting my publicist saying they were going to be there. So that puts me on edge. You literally told people to be there. So, were people really contacting your publicist, or was that another alleged lie, Savannah? Just like your alleged real estate business that ain't nobody not ever seen you on no billboard, no commercial, or not nowhere selling no houses. Just like Todd Chrisley. We didn't never not see him being some big real estate success guru or anything like that. We seen him get their name from the TV show Chrisley Knows Best. And we seen them get their name from being in prison for not paying their bills, allegedly. I said what I said, and I mean what I say. I had no sympathy for not one person out here making excuses for people who are spending time in prison because they did the crime. Girl. Girl. And then she's out here wanting sympathy from the, oh, I'm going to save the people. I'm... I'm here to get justice for everybody. No, you're not. You were out here defending your parents and girl i ain't heard you not one time say did your parents pay their bills did they pay their taxes did your parents in fact try to get loans that they couldn't pay back you ain't said not one thing about that but you out here over girl better watch her mouth out here talking about the prison systems and the government and all that girl you already know allegedly the government and all that runs the media so, I guess if you get hushed, pulled, and silenced, then we all know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Gotta be careful what you say these days, apparently, and who you defaming and talking about, apparently. Savannah out here defaming the whole government. Savannah out here defaming the whole United States of America justice system. Yes, ma'am. And she has a platform to do so, apparently. She's getting paid to do so. Make that part make sense. Meanwhile, people like me out here working every day struggling. Girl, bye. And then did you hear her say, well, Chloe's not going to be there because Chloe's going to be with um, Julie's parents because they're not going to be there because Julie's dad's in bad health and they're watching Chloe. Well, which one is it? Which one is it? You are literally throwing noodles at the fridge hoping one sticks. Did anybody get that? <laughs> Savannah is a whole noodle, and I'm tired of talking about this noodle, but would love to know what y'all think. Let me know in the comments below. Are you going to the appeal? Probably not, but let me know anyway, because I need clicks and views. And also, please share this channel, because trashy tabloid channels and content creators like myself, we don't get enough recognition, apparently. We just get dragged, so please like and share this video. I really would appreciate it. You should just subscribe if you're new here. Just subscribe for the sass of it all, okay? The realness of it all. Because that's me. Subscribe. I love you for watching. Bye.